grace, we have been made alive through Jesus Christ. So let's together praise Him today. Of 
this world You sent your son to die for us So we can freely come to you Catch your own name Set us free. You set us free. Gave us new life. To the cross with your own life. We worship you. We worship you.
keeping God's Word in our minds and hearts enables us to glorify Him even more. This week's memory verse is found in Matthew 7 verses 20 to 21. So then you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Matthew 7 verses 20 to 21. Let's make it a habit to memorize scripture. Blessed Sunday, CCF Feliz Family. I'm Robert, and with me is my wife, Grace, and we will be your hosts for today. It's almost mid-November, and it's almost Christmas time. It's 41 days to go, to be exact. So, welcome to CCF Feliz Sunday Service Local Streaming. English services starts at 9 a.m., and Filipino services starts at 3 p.m., both of which you can watch on demand after its premiere. Also, if you're joining us for the first time, we welcome you, and we're glad to have you with us. So here are some important CCF release announcements and reminders that you need to know this week. Yesterday, we had an online event with our favorite guest speakers, Raul and Camila Galvez. They talked about winning together in conflicts. They shared with us that conflicts are inevitable, and the principles they shared with us yesterday are so relatable to couples like us and to our family. If you missed that session, you may watch all the previous WOW and Men's Ministry digital events and the Sunday worship messages anytime. So you can access them all via CCF Feliz YouTube channel, which has almost 3,600 subscribers now. So praise God. So just simply type CCF Feliz on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button so that you'll be updated regularly. So last November 8th, we also listened to Pastor Ricky Sartu as he encouraged us how to be bold and courageous, especially at this time. We also learned a lot from an allergologist, Dr. Shirley Kwong Bison, um, since we all know that bear months come with aller allergy season, and which can be very challenging for people with allergic rhinitis, just like me. So if you missed that topic as well, you can visit the Live to the Max Ministry Facebook page and YouTube channel. For guardians, parents, and kids, we are inviting you to join our online classes via Zoom every Saturday as we start our new series, The Parable of Jesus. Last Saturday, we learned to know why Jesus used parables in his teachings. That parable reveals God's truth, and we can seek God's truth by studying and applying the parable of Jesus. On Saturday, lessons are aligned with the CCF Sunday Worship Service. Kids will have the chance to interact with their Sunday school teachers and classmates. Sing and dance during praise and worships, demonstrates their creativity while doing arts and crafts, and most especially the opportunity to learn the Word of God. So mommies and daddies, kids, re register advance by typing the link shared in your screen and also follow us on Facebook. That's every Saturday, 10 to 11.30 a.m. for kids ages 4 to 9 years old. And 2 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. also Saturday for those 13 years old. Iniibig ko ang Pilipinas, aking lupang sinilangan. Amidst the crisis and issues our country is facing today, iniibig mo nga ba ang Pilipinas? As part of the youth, how can we contribute and display our love to our motherland? So let's talk about our love for our country. Join our online youth service every Saturday with their new series, Panatang Makabayan, happening live at 3 p.m. at the links below on Elevate Feliz Facebook page. CCF Feliz hosts a prayer watch every Monday at 7 a.m. via Zoom. We also have our daily evening prayer watch from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. via Zoom, which is open to all. And uh, please feel free to attend. And if you are unavailable to join any of our prayer time, you may still send us your prayer requests and we will pray for you. Just type the following link flash on your screen. If you are not yet part of a small group, we encourage you to join one. What is a small group, Daddy? Small group is a group of individuals who meet regularly. Uh, in our case, our D-group meets on second and the fourth Saturdays of the month. So we come together and study the Word of God and pray for each other. 
So just type the link flash on your screen and sign up now. To those who want to send their tithes and love offering for the Lord's Ministry and CCF Feliz, you may send them to bank transfer via GCash. Just open your GCash app and click the bank transfer icon. Then choose BPI and input the following BPI account details flash on your screen. Deposits and transfer to this account are automatic automatically credited for CCF Feliz. If you need receipts, please email proof of transfer or deposit to ccffeliz at yahoo.com to request for one. Or you may also drop your tithes at CCF Feliz office which is open every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. starting this November 16, 2021. Because your health and safety are important to us, we strictly observe um, standard safety protocols. So always wear your face mask, face shield, and maintain social dis distancing at all times. So be before, before we start our service proper, well, let's all come in prayer. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this time. We live up to you this worship service. We pray that you open our hearts and mind as we listen to your message. We continue to pray for everyone's safety, protect us, and strengthen us in this time of pandemic. We pray for the recovery of those who have um, infections, also those who are going through mental health issues. We lift up the rest of the services to you, Lord, and we pray, Lord, that uh, you continue to guide us and protect us. We lift up the rest of the week also, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. What a joy and a privilege to be with all of you again today as we continue our series on Uncover God's Kingdom through the parables of Jesus. Why is this new series so important? Because by studying the parables, we will uncover the hidden truths in the parables, which will impact our lives now and for eternity. It is very important. The topic for today is be genuine, not fake. What enters your mind when you think of the word fake? Counterfeit? Forgery? Imitation? Phony? No one wants to be deceived or invest in something that is a fake. How many of you have experienced being deceived? You may not realize this. When I was young, I was into treasure hunting. I was looking for the famous Yamashita treasure. I even bought a metal detector. One day, a man approached us, telling us that the local natives have discovered some gold bars, probably part of the famous Yamashita treasure. They wanted to sell the gold bars at a discounted price because they needed to convert the gold bars into money. They are natives, they don't know how to deal with government, and they are afraid of the government. I was so excited, I sent my friend with the money and told him to check if the bars were fake or genuine. My friend came back, he said he checked, he bought the bar, it looked genuine, it felt genuine, the more I got excited. But guess what? When I had it tested, it was a fake. No one wants to invest the resources in what is fake. No one wants to invest their life in what is fake. What is genuine? Genuine means true, actual, real, authentic. And that is what we all want. We want genuine relationship. 
genuine friendship, we don't want something that's fake. That day, I learned many lessons. When something is too good to be true, it is probably not true. Don't be greedy. When you are greedy, you will believe what you like to believe. And don't be after fast money. Jesus gave us parables to warn us not to be deceived. He does not want us to deceive ourselves. This is the worst kind of deception. When Jesus explained the kingdom of heaven, Jesus gave seven parables. Last Sunday, we discussed the first parable, the parable of four soils, four kinds of heart, the hard heart, shallow, divided, and devoted. What this parable is telling us, not everybody will respond positively to the message of God, to the message of the gospel. The second parable taught by Jesus is the tares and the wheat. What is Jesus telling us? Genuine and fake Christians will coexist. What is true, what is counterfeit, will coexist. The third parable that Jesus gave us is about the mustard seed. He's talking about the power of the gospel. How, when truth is received, it will transform life. Just like the mustard seed. There is transformation, there is growth. The fourth parable is the parable of the leaven. Same idea. The power of the gospel has the amazing power to permeate life like a leaven that will impact the dough, that will make it grow, that will impact every area of the life of a true believer. The fifth parable is the parable of the hidden treasure. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is simply saying, a genuine believer, once they encounter the gospel, will have transformation from the heart. The heart will change. His passion will change. His priority will change. His value will change. The parable of the pearl says the same thing. He talks about when somebody finds the pearl of great price, he sells everything to buy that pearl of great price. What is the principle? When somebody understands the gospel, he'll be willing to give up everything for the sake of what is really important, what is the real treasure of life. And the last parable is about the parable of a dragnet. This parable talks about at the end of times, there's going to be a separation between the genuine followers of Jesus and fake followers of Jesus. And this will be exposed and their destiny will be completely different. I'm going to discuss the six parables by highlighting what Jesus explained. Remember, out of the seven parables, Jesus explained only two parables to his disciples. The parable of the four soils and the parables of the wheat and the tares. Today, we will uncover the rest of the parables of Jesus. And you'll notice the six parables really have one main theme. Be a genuine follower and not fake. Be genuine, not fake. How do I differentiate a genuine follower of Jesus versus a fake follower of Jesus? Well, the Bible is very clear. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 20, Jesus tells us, by their fruit, you will recognize them. He's very emphatic. By their fruit. What does that mean? The next verse tells us, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Jesus is very clear. By their fruit, the fruit of obedience. And now I'm going to explain to you how the parables of Jesus expanded this reality. By their fruit, you shall know the difference between somebody fake or somebody genuine. In Matthew 13, verses 24 to 30, let me read for you the parable of the wheat and the tares. Jesus presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man 
who sowed good seed in his field. While his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. But when the wheat sprouted and bore grain, then the tares became evident. The slaves of the landowner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? He said, No. While you are gathering up the tares, you may uproot the wheat with them. Allow both to grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, gather up the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them up and gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus explains the parable. The seed is the word of God. The field is the world. The wheat is the sons of the kingdom. These are the true, genuine followers of Jesus. The tares, these are fake believers, sons of the devil. The enemy is the devil. He tells us very clearly, when will you know the difference? When the wheat sprouted and bore grain, then the tares became evident. What Jesus is saying in this parable, it is very difficult to distinguish between the tares and the wheat. You will only know the difference when it's time for the wheat to produce the grain. The wheat will bow down because of the weight of the grain. The tares will remain standing. I have my own experience in growing corn and sorghum. Some of you may not know about sorghum. Sorghum is almost like corn. They look the same. Sorghum is feeds for the pigs. It is the cheaper kind of corn. They look the same. The only time you can see the difference is harvest time. During harvest time, you'll see the difference. This is sorghum, not corn. Here is the corn. You see the corn? The same thing today. It's hard to distinguish between genuine followers of Jesus and counterfeit followers, fake followers. The fake and the genuine, it's hard to tell the difference. But Jesus is saying, it is not your job, it is not my job to focus on judging who are real and who are not. Jesus is making it very clear the following. The reality of fake believers and genuine believers will coexist. Secondly, it's hard to distinguish between the two. You will only know it at the end time. And that's what Jesus is saying. Notice, as the tares are gathered up and burned with fire, so shall it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send forth his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all stumbling blocks and those who commit lawlessness. What Jesus is saying, it is not your job, my job, to focus on who are counterfeits and who are not. It is not my job to focus on who are fake and who are not. Jesus is saying, let them grow together. Let them coexist together. But at the end times, Jesus is saying, I will send the angels to separate the two. So don't be preoccupied in judging who are fake, who are real. Just make sure you are real. This is so important. Why? Because at the end times, there are consequences to counterfeit believers, to fake followers of Jesus. Notice what Jesus is saying. And will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus introduced to us now the reality of hell. However you call that place, it is an actual place. Throw them into the furnace of fire. That place is not pleasant. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you understand the word weeping 
and gnashing, it is a word used to describe not just ordinary crying, weeping, tremendous regret, tremendous sorrow. It's like you're bawling. You are crying out loud. It's hard to imagine, but that is what will happen. It's a sign of helplessness and hopelessness. Gnashing of teeth. Wow, gnashing. It's like complete regret. You are saying, what in the world am I doing? Why, why did I not listen to the truth? That is the expression of what Jesus is saying. Be careful that you are not a counterfeit. And then the contrast. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. Do you notice? This is a command. You listen very well. There's going to be a difference between true followers, genuine followers versus fake. This is now an allusion to the book of Daniel. The righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Entering the kingdom of heaven is one of the greatest gifts that God is offering us. The book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 2 and 3 tells us, Many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake, this to everlasting life, others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. You notice? Know everlasting contempt. Those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven. And those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Jesus is now describing the destiny of genuine Christians, genuine followers of Jesus. Amazing future in the kingdom of heaven. The reason why you have many fake followers of Jesus is found in the book of 2 Corinthians, the reality of the devil. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 13 to 15, such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. In short, you have fake Bible teachers, counterfeit, deceivers. They even disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. No wonder even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness whose end will be according to their deeds. The Bible warns us, Satan is a great deceiver. He can disguise himself as angel of light. That's why many people believe in false doctrines. How can you know the truth from what is not true? How can you differentiate fake from genuine teachings of the Bible? You got to know the Bible. Today, the churches and the media are full of counterfeit gospel. Some will even go far as to say, once you come to Christ, you are saved. It does not matter how you live anymore. They abuse the teachings of the grace of God. They even say you don't need to confess your sin. For some people, they'll even say, there's no more hell. Don't worry. Hell is not real. There's a lot of counterfeit fake gospel. And that's why this message is important. Don't be deceived. If you believe the wrong thing, you begin to deceive yourself. So this parable tells us fake and genuine believers will coexist. Therefore, do not be surprised or discouraged because the Bible is very clear. They will be present. The fake and genuine is hard to tell. So do not judge. They coexist. So do not think of purging. Now is not a time to purge them because out of grace, out of mercy, Jesus is saying, now is not a time. The parable tells us, do not purge them now. By removing the tears, you may destroy the wheat. What is Jesus saying? It's an act of grace, act of mercy. Because there are some wheat 
who may act like tares today, but by the grace of God, they will be transformed. They will repent. How will you know if these people who are unbelievers will someday become believers? So Jesus, Jesus is simply saying, be patient. Leave that to him. And that's why he said at the end of the age, God will take care of the separation. Not you, not me. He will take care of the separation. And the destiny is going to be very clear, completely different. Lesson, be genuine. Don't be a fake. No wonder 2 Corinthians chapter 13 tells us, test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Notice the grammar. You are to test yourselves. You are, you are to examine yourselves, not others. The Bible says, do you not know, do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you? Indeed, unless you fail the test, notice what the Bible is telling us. You are to examine your own faith. You are to examine yourself. Are you in the faith? Are you not? Are you a true follower? Are you a genuine Christian? Or are you a fake Christian? This is important. The grammar says, not focus on others. You test yourself. The next two parables, the parable of the mustard seed and the leaven explains what will happen to genuine followers of Jesus when they receive the word of God by faith. When they accept Jesus Christ, when they receive the spirit of God, what is certain will be transformation. The mustard seed, the Bible tells us, is very small. But you will notice something. Jesus is simply saying, it is smaller than other seeds, but when it is full grown, it becomes larger than the garden plants. And it becomes a tree. So that the birds of the air come and nest. You will notice the master teacher. He used stories that people can relate. Remember, parables are earthly stories with heavenly meaning. He talks about the mustard seed. The mustard seed is so small. And yet, because there is life, and when you plant it, it will grow. It will be like a tree. The Bible describes the Christian life as something like this. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, You have been born again, not of seed which is perishable and imperishable, that is through the living and enduring word of God. Genuine Christians are born again. How are they born again? When they receive the word of God. It says, when you put your faith in who Jesus is, in his promises. Genuine followers of Jesus will have transformation, will have growth. The same thing with the parable of the leaven. This is what Jesus said. He spoke another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a leaven, which a woman took, hid it in three pecks of flour until it was all leaven. What is Jesus saying? Many times people think leaven always means something bad. No. What Jesus is saying is simply this. Leaven is something, it's yeast, that will cause its surroundings to grow. Leaven will permeate the dough. I asked my wife, how do you bake bread? How do you make cakes? The same principle. You put a little leaven in the flour and it will expand. It will grow. Such is the reality of true, genuine followers of Jesus. Once they allow God's word into their hearts, their lives, they will grow. They will, they will change. The evidence of a true, genuine followers of Jesus is what I call the fruit. Because of God's word, the life of Christ in us, there is tremendous power. The power of transformation. Because of the life of Christ in us. The power of growth. Character will change. We become more and more like Christ. The power of influence. As our lives are changed, we are able to influence. Like the mustard seed. We are able to provide shade. We become a blessing to the world. Do you now understand why these parables go together? The reality of fake and genuine followers. How can you tell? Through the parables of the mustard seed 
and leaven, the reality of transformation, growth. How are you doing? Are you a genuine follower of Jesus? If you are, can you see changes in your life? Do you see growth? Are you growing in your character? Are you growing in your love for the Lord? Genuine followers of Jesus, the Bible tells us, by their fruit ye shall know them. The next two parables is about treasure and the pearl of great price. Let me read for you. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid again, and from joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. You will say, how can treasure be hidden in the field? You must understand, in the time of Jesus, there is no safety deposit box. The bank is not such that you can keep your treasures in the bank. So what do they do? To protect themselves in times of war, for safekeeping, they hide their treasures under the ground. So that when the enemy will come, their treasures are protected. That is exactly what Jesus is saying. A man sees treasure in the field. So what did he do? He did not steal it. He sold everything to buy that field. I want you to imagine now, you are the relatives, you are the friend of this man. What will you tell him? You will probably say, what in the world are you doing? Why are you selling everything? You will think he's crazy. But not this man. He knew what he was doing. Look at the second story. It talks about a businessman. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. Upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, let me ask you, if you're the friend of this businessman, what will you be saying? Why are you selling all the other fine pearls? And you will think he's crazy. You see, what Jesus is saying is these two men are not crazy. They saw things that people do not see. The Christian life is really understanding the gospel. And once you understand the gospel, it will impact your heart. It will impact your mind. It will impact your perspective. Therefore, your values will be changed. Your priorities will be changed. It's a radical transformation from the inside out. Why? Because you have discovered the truth that the greatest treasure is none other than Jesus. That the greatest treasure is the gift of Jesus himself. Eternal life, forgiveness, Genuine Christian understand the principle of trade-off. What is trade-off? It's about investment. You exchange something for something much better. It's like the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul said the following, More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, whom I've suffered the loss of of all things, and count them but rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. Do you notice what Paul is saying? Paul is simply saying this, I count all things to be lost in view, in light of. It's a comparative statement. The comparative statement is this, in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Genuine follower of Jesus understand the value of the gospel. He understand how priceless is Jesus. Because in Jesus, what do you have? Notice what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, And may be found in him, 
not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. You know what Paul is saying? When he discovered Jesus, he realized the greatest gift of Jesus is himself. When you have Jesus, what do you have? You have forgiveness. You have righteousness. Our righteousness, salvation, is not by human effort. It is not by means of obeying the law. But that which is true, faith in Christ. He discovered the righteousness that comes from God through Jesus by faith. The righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. For the Apostle Paul, that is priceless. For the Apostle Paul, salvation is priceless. For the Apostle Paul, eternal life in Christ is priceless. And that's why he's saying, I count them but rubbish that I may gain Christ. What is the Bible saying? The Bible is saying salvation, while it is free, it is not cheap. Salvation is priceless. You cannot earn it. You can only receive it by faith, by grace. However, in order to receive the amazing promise of God, in order to have Jesus, you need to make a radical decision. What is a radical decision? The willingness to surrender all in order to follow Jesus, in order to help Jesus. Salvation is free, but it will cost you everything. The all or nothing principle. Either Jesus is Lord of all, or he's not Lord at all. Don't be confused. The Bible is very clear. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, the Bible is very clear. For by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works that no one should boast. You see, salvation is by grace. You don't buy it. It's not by good works. It's by grace. Something you don't deserve by faith. However, true faith is never alone. True faith means the willingness to entrust your all to Jesus. The book of James is very clear. Faith without works is dead. The Bible is very clear. Grace does not mean licentiousness. The Bible is equally clear. Faith is never alone. The evidence of faith is transformed life. And to summarize everything, Jesus closes with the last parable. Matthew 13, 47 to 50. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea and gathering the fish of every kind. And when it was filled, they drew it up on the beach and they sat down and gathered the good fish into the containers. But the bad they threw away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and take out the wicked from among the righteous and will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is what Jesus is saying. At the end of the age, there will be a separation of genuine followers of Jesus and fake believers. That is the job of God. And the Bible tells us there is no exception. That day will come. And when that day comes, it is the angels. It is God that will do the separation. Not you, not me. Notice what he said. He will throw them into the furnace of fire in that place. Notice. Hell, however you want to call it, is a real place. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's a repetition of the parable of the tares and the wheat. Jesus is very emphatic. He's saying it is very serious. 
make sure you are a true follower of Jesus. In the parables of Jesus, you will learn something. Heaven and hell are realities. In the four Gospels, Jesus, the kindest, most compassionate person, the most loving person who ever lived, the Son of God, he spoke more about hell than he did about heaven. Do you realize that? Do you realize why Jesus has to tell us the reality of heaven and hell, but especially about hell? Because it is very hard for me personally to believe about hell. How I wish it is not taught by Jesus. How I wish it is not in the Bible. The Bible continuously warns us about hell. There are 162 references, allusion about hell. Over 70 of these references were uttered by none other than Jesus Christ. Either hell is true or Jesus is lying. The reason why I believe the series on the parables of Jesus is so serious is that you and I will take action today because the kingdom of heaven is real and God offers that to us. But the warning about hell is equally real because Luke 16, Jesus tells us, in Hades, he lifted up his eyes being in torment, the place of torment. And the Bible tells us in the story of Jesus, the rich man cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue. I am in agony in this place. What Jesus is saying, hell is a real place. A place of agony, a place of torment. And that is why you have weeping and gnashing of teeth. After listening to the parable of Jesus, I want to ask you a question. Are you a genuine Christian? Do you see evidence or evidences in your life? Is there growth? Is there transformation? Like the mustard seed, like the leaven, do you see changes? What about your heart? Is your love and your passion transformed? Are your values transformed? from the temporal to the eternal, like the man who discovered the treasures, like the businessman who sold everything in order to have the most precious pearl. You see, the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us your priority will reflect your understanding of the gospel. If you have no interest in God's word, if you have no desire to seek more about the kingdom of heaven, no desire for Bible study, may I ask you, I don't judge you, I humbly ask you, examine yourself. As the Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians, examine yourself. Are you in the faith? Are you not? I don't judge you. We are not to judge others. But examine yourself. Are you in the faith? Are you not? Test yourself. Does your priority reflect your understanding of the gospel? Does your life, your values, your priorities reflect what you really believe about the gospel of Jesus? I want you to hear the testimony of a young man how he started out as a fake Christian and how God transformed him into a genuine follower. My name is Bergi Doria. I grew up in a family where we consistently attended church. But in reality, I was deep in sin. I was drinking, partying, and was getting involved in relationships. It came to a point that I would go to school with a hangover 
because I was drinking the night before. And what I tell my parents was that I was doing school projects. I was a bully. I cursed others and threatened them so that they would respect me. My spiritual life was completely dead at this point. And one day, my family started attending CCF, where my parents encouraged me to attend Elevate. It was called J-Zone then. It was a high school retreat. The night before the retreat, I even partied, got drunk, and I attended the first day of that retreat with a hangover. During that retreat, I thought that people were weird and I was uncomfortable, but God worked in my heart. He opened my eyes to see how Jesus loves me and how His sacrifice on the cross is sufficient to forgive me of all my sins if I accept Him as my Lord and Savior. Slowly but surely, God started to change my life and my heart, and I learned that I needed to honor my parents. I did my best to lovingly obey and respect them. And I also joined a small group, which helped me to be accountable with my brothers in Christ, who helped me in my walk with Him. I even answered the call to make disciples of my own. I started a small group, and there I was able to help other young men grow in their faith. And even as I entered college, God continued to move in my life. And by His grace, I was able to finish well and become a full-fledged civil engineer. Now, I am happily married to my beautiful wife, Michelle, and we have two beautiful children, Migo and Magnolia. My wife and I work together in the construction industry, where our goal is not just to improve and uplift spaces to make our clients happy, but more importantly, to pray for, help, and share the gospel to our workers and employees. I truly praise God for all the people He brought in my life who have helped me in my walk with Christ. If God had not used my D-group leader, brothers in Christ, and spiritual mentors, I would, would have continued to live a life full of selfishness, anger, and pride. This life is not meant to be lived alone, and I am thankful for these people who continuously help me to live a God-glorifying and Spirit-filled life. You will notice in the life of Bergi Doria, how God can transform a tear into a wit, a fake Christian into a genuine follower of Jesus. It's by the grace of God. The gospel is powerful. The fruit becomes evident. It transforms lives. You see, the kingdom of heaven has amazing value system. If you have the whole world and you have everything, but you don't have Jesus, it's nothing. If you have Jesus plus nothing, you have everything. You may ask, how can I be sure I am a genuine follower of Jesus? It's very simple. I call this the all or nothing principle. Jesus tells us, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? In other words, what do we mean by all or nothing? The willingness to surrender all, to give up all for the sake of having Jesus. Is there anything that's holding you back from having Jesus? Ask yourself, is there anything in your life, any sin, any relationships that you know God wants you to give up? What about materialism? What about family? What is it that is more important to you than Jesus? Whatever that is, I want you to remember what Jesus tells us. Look at Luke 9, 25. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits his soul? Do you know what Jesus is saying? What will it gain you? If you gain the whole world, can you imagine the whole world, all the money of the world? You are so rich, beyond description, but you lose your own soul. Jesus is saying, what kind of a decision is that? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes to the, in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. The whole principle of a genuine father of Jesus is simply this. Your values are transformed. Jesus is your highest priority and you are not ashamed of Jesus. You are not ashamed of his words. That's what he's saying. Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, Jesus is saying the Son of Man will be ashamed. A genuine Christian has relationship with Jesus. 
He understands the love of Jesus and he loves Jesus. It does not mean he's perfect. It does not mean he will never fail. But should he fail, he gets up again. Why? Because you have the Spirit of Christ, you have the Holy Spirit in your heart. And you understand the love of God is unconditional. So a genuine follower of Jesus will rise up again should he fail. And he keeps on following Jesus. Why? Because Christ is in him. Christ is in us. That's the good news. Are you a genuine follower of Jesus? If God has spoken to your heart and you are not sure that you belong to the kingdom of heaven, my friend, don't risk your eternity. I want you to pray with me. This is a radical decision you need to make. But it matters. God loves you. And your eternity is at stake. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I'm not sure if I belong to you or not. Sometimes I feel I'm a counterfeit, but today I want to make sure. I want to be honest with you. Lord Jesus, I surrender my all to you. I accept you today unconditionally as my Lord and Savior. I'm willing to surrender everything because you love me and I trust you. I invite you today as my Lord and Master. I accept your gift of forgiveness. I accept your gift of eternal life. Change my heart so that my heart will learn to love you and to trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. If this message has been very meaningful to you, I want you to click on the space provided below. If you need counseling and you want more Bible studies, we will be happy to chat with you. We'll be happy to help you. In a short while, we will have discussion questions. In the meantime, we will have fast track. Stay tuned. God bless you. Good day, CCFM. It's Elevate Man. That's why I'm here, Euclid from Elevate, and we are here today with Pastor Peter for another Sunday Fast Track. Pastor Peter, what if I encounter someone who seems to be fake? How do I biblically respond? That's a very good question because there are times when we feel like judging people. If you remember the parable of Jesus when he talks about the tares and the wheat, he was asked, Shall I separate the two now? Shall I separate the counterfeit from the real? What was the answer of Jesus? No. Jesus said no. What's the principle? The principle is you be careful when you judge others because only God knows who are genuine and who are fake. However, if the fake is very obvious and he claims to be a Christian, the Bible is equally clear. In the book of 1 Corinthians, the Bible says, if there is somebody claiming to be a Christian, but he acts like an unbeliever, then the Bible says you are to discipline that person. So that parable is not saying we do not discipline people who are obviously in sin. However, it says be careful that you don't waste your time or focus your time in judging others. That's a good reminder. Do not judge. Pastor Peter, in the Bible, why did Jesus bother to teach us about hell? Do you notice in this parable, Jesus discussed about a place where there is fire and there's weeping and gnashing of teeth? Why? Because he is unloving. On the contrary, he is loving. He knows the truth and he wants to warn us. And that's why this series is very, very important. The reality is you need to examine yourself. Why? Because your eternal destiny lies in the reality whether you are a true follower or not. Heaven is real. Hell is real. And God wants us to go to the kingdom of heaven. He does not want us to go to hell. And that's why he gave his son, Jesus, to die for us. So this parable is so crucial. Many people today are living as though hell is air-conditioned. 
Was ist denn da drin? Mm. Herrlich für dich. Take it seriously. Pastor Peter, now this is an intriguing question. How can a loving God create hell? You know, that is usually a question asked. Many times we fail to realize, what will you do if you were God? Look at what God did. Because He is loving and because He is holy, what did He do? He's willing to forgive us all our sins. He died on the cross so that you can have a fresh beginning. He did everything for us. Why is there hell? For a simple reason. God is holy. He does not want us to go there. God offers us salvation, but the holiness of God, the very character of God, dictates. Mm -hmm. It's imperative that sin will be judged. And in God's love, He gave His own Son. People who go to hell will know. If you look at the parable story, mm -hmm. you will notice in the story, all of them understand they deserve to be there. Mm. Not yes. one will accuse God of being unjust. You know why? Mm. Because hell is a place where people say, I want my will. I don't want your will. Hell is a place where we're eternally separated from God. People today who don't want God, that's what they're choosing. Because heaven is God's presence. If you don't like God, you don't want God, where else will you go? Mm. Hell is the absence of the presence of God. Just remember, If you study the Bible, if you study what Jesus did, it is not God sending us to hell. It's we ourselves choosing to turn away from God. Romans chapter 1. Because of creation, we know there's a God. But our heart tells us, turn away from God. It's our choice. Thank you for answering our questions. And that's it for Sunday Fast Track. Happy Elevate Month and God bless. The following are discussion questions I hope that you'll discuss with your family, with your loved ones, with your D-group members, with your friends. Number one, what are the evidences that shows that you are a genuine Christian? Number two, what are some lasting changes that's ongoing in your life right now? Number three, how can you show that Jesus is your highest priority. I hope and pray that you will have a wonderful time discussing the above questions. God bless.